The Clava Cairns are a well-preserved Bronze Age cemetery complex of passage graves, ring cairns, curb cairns, and standing stones in a megalithic setting. They can be visited right outside of Inverness, Scotland. The site dates back to over 4,000 years old. The site predates the cairns as archaeologists have found evidence of farming and site living below the cairn zone. Just how far back this site dates is unknown, but it's old. The cairns themselves could very well have been built from the stone housing structures that predated the cemetery complex. As we have discussed before, this reuse of material by those that occupy a site after others are gone is a large reason as to why we have lost a good part of our human history. Reuse, looting, and destruction is the human way. There are many other cairns and ancient Bronze Age cemeteries in the area. My work has been focused here because of the uplifted earth throughout the complex. Human remains and artifacts were deposited throughout the cairns on the site. I believe there's a lot more to be located below ground, never touched. Uplift and mound regions will be highlighted in this presentation as we can now see what is there in a non-invasive manner using new technology. Great amounts of manual labor were used to create the megalithic structure. The work was done to a degree that it has lasted thousands of years. Layout of the structures appeared to have had meaning to the builders. The cairns were placed in circular designs in a typical ancient people's design of the inner circle, assessed by a central passageway. I've highlighted this ancient architectural design in several of my past videos. I still believe this was taught to those in the past by groups and civilizations that predate human history. They've been said to be beings of large stature who became the deities, the living gods to our ancestors. Cairns near the highlands come in Corbel vaulted ceiling and no ceiling styles. It is a vaulted style that has lasted thousands of years. The central chamber tomb appears to have underground outer passages or cavities that were piled up and now small mounds can easily be seen as one walks around. Most lead directly to a large megalithic stone that has been mostly buried with portions of the top jutting out of the ground. Orthostats are everywhere. Notice the uplifted ground. None of this has ever been evaluated and excavated. What lies below remains a mystery. This takes place throughout the site complex. To those in love with the Bronze Age or questioning the history we've been told to believe, Clava Kearns is a paradise. Look at the extended mounds going out to the standing stones. These areas of uplift need to be examined. When I'm back in Inverness, I plan on doing so myself. The plan is to use dipole ground penetrating radar and 3D magnetometer geo survey imaging. This technology is covered in prior videos on my YouTube channel. Both are non-invasive and will damage no part of this incredible ancient site. These burial cairns were large. Interestingly, they only contained one or two bodies each. Those completely closed off appear to have been meant to keep everyone out permanently. Positioning of the entrances of the cairns are southwest toward midwinter sunsets. These could have been stacked higher in the past. The stone material could have been repurposed for new buildings by those living after the original builders. There are areas of interest for my research into the ancient past. To unravel the mysteries of these prehistoric people, we must reevaluate and look further into what was overlooked in the past. I can also use new metal detection technology that combines pulse induction with the magnetometer. It allows me to discriminate types of metal below to a depth of 26 feet with a 2x2 meter detection coil. Uplifted ground is connected at certain points from cairn to cairn. I posit to you that maybe we are looking at ancient occupation sites below the cairns that are needing excavation. From soil composition and the area's harsh climate, I believe depths of 8 to 15 feet would be necessary to search for potential older site usage. 
Uplift leads outward to standing stones. Megalithic stones were important to the stone builders. That importance remains an enigma to modern day archeologists. We can only speculate on their purpose. Religion and ceremonial can't be the only answers. They often are located in areas that contain higher than normal magnetic and electromagnetic energy that often is transient and difficult to pinpoint origin. I will be testing my belief in the United Kingdom and Ireland in the next 24 months. I'm excited to see the results. I plan on testing this at sites as a whole and standing stones logged as single data points. Some of the megalithic rocks are buried mostly below ground, tops only showing above ground. I want to log size below ground using 3D ground imaging. I'm curious to know just how large the standing stones are in their entirety. A curb or stone ring built to enclose the cairn can be seen at this site. Why exactly this was done for the deceased remains a mystery. I've suggested that this was a practice created for the dead because it had meaning and somehow mimicked the living gods of their ancestors from a very archaic period, most likely before and during the last ice age. Its meaning appears to be attached to the heavens, the sun, and the planets. Was this in honor of those before us that did not look like us, meaning a difference in DNA? Outer stone circles should be checked. During ancient times in North America, some locations similar to this would have an initial burial below of a single body. Upon further review, some of these burials were hiding a vertical shaft that led to a circular or semicircular master burial site where multiple bodies were buried. The body at the top was human. Those below were of larger stature. Some of the skulls were larger than the size of a modern day human. Mandible stru structure was questionable for Homo sapien. I believe that running several grid pattern searches with GPR will bring to light voids and cavities that have been missed. Artifacts can also be located this way. Here we have a minor ring. This standing stone appears to have OM script on it, or it could be erosion. If it is OM script, when was the script added to the stone? We cannot date the stone because of it. It could have been added thousands of years later. A multitude of standing stones, all shapes and sizes. And by the way, now I screwed up the last time I was at the Cairns and failed to check these standing stones for drilled or cord holes that could have been used for directional use or something to do with astronomy or astrology. Finding something of this nature may be a better way to date when the standing stone was originally used for such a purpose only. This is rare, a paired standing stone in a specific formation. Again, all we can do is speculate as to why. It would be a good to use uh, 3D imaging to see just how large the stone is. I believe the larger part is below ground. How and why did these ancients take the time and manpower required to create locations such as this? This area of Inverness is the entry to the Scottish Highlands. There are stories of many different races, species, and cultures living here in the past. Are we talking about a very ancient past, one that predates the past ice age? Can we locate artifacts at sites such as this where very little excavation has taken place in the last 20 plus years? We now have better archeological tools at our disposal to do so. There are outer, inner, and random standing stones everywhere. Many of them with mounds or uplifted soil around them are leading directly up to them. Pause the presentation here and take a moment to read the plaque. Notice that radiocarbon dating of charcoal fragments found across the site puts construction of the large cairns to about 2000 BC. But think about this carefully. Were these not special sites, sites that had special energy or meaning causing the area to be occupied over extended periods of times? A group could have occupied the area for a few days, created fires and then left. This could have been a day, a year, 100 years or 5,000 years after others visited or lived at the site. How can we date a site from a few charcoal remains found within the area? We give too much credit sometimes to carbon-14 dating, and trust me, I've performed several of these tests during my time in the lab. 
we are dating a wood or bone remain found in an area and hoping, if not praying, that it matches those people that built or left behind the greatest megalithic structures and artifacts. Don't believe the hype. The same goes for microscopic analysis of pollens and other flora. And one other thing, did you catch the part about the Neolithic flint found? Settlements are older than we are led to believe. Do you know what decides when a team stops digging? Three things usually, at least to what I've been exposed to. One, is a professor in charge said so? Second is money. When the grant money runs out, everything stops. Another reason is seasonal excavation because of location. Academia continues to try and place all ancient sites into a neat and tidy box that was created around 175 years ago by anthropologists that knew very little compared to what is known today. The history they knew back then has been updated many times. It will continue to be updated. I always tell people, the archaeological record advances one death at a time. Change needs to be made by the new ranks coming out of the universities. This was taken during a break from the rain. I continue to ask myself how ancient structures survive for so long, and I can't get the stucco on my house to last more than 15 years. When you are inside the cairns, you will marvel at the architecture. You'll feel a change in vibration and frequency. I was here on a quiet day. It rained the entire morning and tourists did not show up for several hours. You could almost hear and feel a different space and time inside the site. I would like to test for magnetic and electromagnetic differences within the area, just outside the area and 25 plus meters past the site. What do you believe the difference in measurements taken will be? These walls to these burial structures were most likely walls to an earlier residence, reused, reallocated by future tribes and bands in the area, or that came into the area later. So much raised ground to look at. Higher mounds. This spot really needs to be searched below ground. Did it all begin here in ancient Scotland around 6,000 years ago? How much longer are we going to continue living with old beliefs as to when culture and civilization began? Why could the gods of old that were worshipped by our ancestors not have been living gods, those that looked different, were taller, smarter, and had tools and other devices that made sound and performed feats of magic? Consider what our tools and technology would have looked like to them. I often wonder what this is a representation of. I know what it looks like to me. What does it look like to you? Of all the places that I've been to in the world, nowhere do I feel more at home than in Inverness, Scotland. The frequency and vibration is different. There's something around, maybe below, that calls out. I often sense I've slipped back in time. When I go to Neolithic sites in the area, I can't help but feel I'm elsewhere, completely removed from this time frame. When it's raining early in the mornings and I'm alone at the sites, I often feel that I'm not alone. If I could move anywhere in the world today, it would be here, to have the view you see now. The next time I'm back to this land of wonder, I'll make sure to take more tools to help find those answers to the questions that I've asked. Please follow me and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want you to be along for the trip between science and other possibilities. One that requires an open mind and a glimmer of belief in what we have yet to understand and what we consider not normal. Take care, everyone.